welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Don't shoot, it's me! Ah! Oh! 2020 Texas Gladiators, which we probably should have reviewed earlier, is pretty indistinguishable from Bronx Warriors, Raiders of Atlantis, and indeed 2019 after the fall of New York. Please subscribe to see reviews of these and more. It'd be a new experience. And when you look at the glut of post-apocalyptic films coming out of Italy in the 1980s, you do have to wonder what was going on there that this looked like the most likely future. Although, I'm not sure anyone could have accurately predicted 2020. We open with a statement of intent. Let's make sure nobody's left alive. They have a go. The heroic post-apocalyptic rangers take on the evil post-apocalyptic bad guys. <laughs> who appear to have raided a nunnery, saving Throne of Fire's Sabrina Siani. But one of the rangers didn't get the memo explaining that they're the good guys. <laughs> and has to be admonished. Why? Why'd you do it, catch dog? Uh, why do you think? Introductions follow. Tell me what your name is. Maida. And yours? Nexus. Nexus and Maida. It must be the future. And after a brief exchange of ideologies... You gotta be strong in a world without laws. Ruthless too. No, the law is gone and killing isn't the way to bring it back. Nexus swears off violence joining Maida at the peaceful refinery, developing energy solutions for a less Mad Max future. Hmm, someone didn't get the post-apocalyptic dress code. But this makes them the perfect target for bad guys. Ah! And the workers rush to defend themselves. Ah! Non-violence is a flexible doctrine. The bikers are driven away, but now... Is it weird that the anarchic bikers are on the same side as the riot police? Uh, I can see a problem with those shields. Aim for the holes! Actually, they have thermal shields, so the bullets just bounce off. Making you wonder why they bothered with the bikers. One of whom picks up the Dark Corners Madonna Award for uncomfortable underwear. Nexus and Maida are captured with predictable results. So you don't want to play, huh? Even the cow is disgusted. Now we meet the riot police's leader. We are the new order. The one real, true, strong and reliable force to emerge from the ruins of the atomic war. Colonel Klink here employs the bikers on top of his soldiers as shock troops. Shock troops who don't have thermal shields and who Spoilers, lose every fight they're in throughout the film. For some reason, they've left Nexus unguarded and loosely tied up. So he's free to sneak up. No! And get himself killed. We now jump to the Old West, where Maida has been won in a card game. But Nexus's old mates are there to win her back with a game of Russian roulette. Uh, now you see, hey, that's you cheating. You're in. That's me. What? Did you? This gets Jab and Halicron into trouble. You'll get ten years down in the mines for all the damage you've done in here. Take him away. Yes, because having killed Nexus and sidelined Maida there's definitely time to start what seems like a completely unrelated story. But Colonel Clink has heard of the Rangers' approach. Got to stop them. Here everything's going according to plan. And no, there was nothing to foreshadow the fact that these guys could stop him. What's the matter? Afraid of three men? You'll want to talk. And FYI, if your entire army can be defeated by three men, maybe your new world order was doomed to begin with. I'm not amused by your joke. The third ranger, Red Wolf, now rescues his friends with the help of Maida. Last seen a slave in the saloon, now a gun-toting ranger. How long were they in that mine? There's not enough to drink, so just wet your lips. Then pout and call me daddy. 
The bikers attack, but the rangers trick them by mashing the faces of the enemy dead and passing them off as their own corpses. And they escape. Where are we going? Who knows? This is the threat to the New World Order? <laughs> they seek help. We don't trust white men. Oh good, it's a Western again. But we are all part of one people. Of one tribe, one race. Yeah, lecture the Native Americans on how we're all in this together. That'll go down well. But they do join up for the assault on the refinery. And it turns out that thermal shields don't stop arrows because... The tips of our arrows are cold. A wafer-thin rationale for this ridiculous ending. They're getting through! Nothing can stop them! And so on. <laughs> this is Maida's story. She's there pretty much throughout, except for the sequence in the mine. Her philosophy underpins the story. She has the strongest revenge motive and is trying to save her daughter. But the film is never from her perspective. Yes, it was terrible. Not that that would fix it. This is just a bunch of vaguely connected fight scenes. You go on insulting us. Is that all you can give us? Pretty much. But one of these days, we must do a timeline of apocalypses. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For a more recent 2020 story, check out my book, The Golem of 2020. There's a link in the description below. Most apocalypses look pretty much the same. How would yours differ? Pitch us your post-apocalyptic films in the comments below. You better get going. Uh, uh.